Welcome to our worship service this morning. If you've been with us over the previous weeks of lockdown, thanks for coming back. And if this is the first time that you are watching us, we're glad you found us online. Uh, we gather together on Facebook, YouTube, and later as a church family on Zoom uh, to proclaim the character, acts, and words of God who is alone worthy of our praise and worship. It's important for us to continue doing this in the face of all the current restrictions because this is what we were made to do. You see, we were all made to glorify God and to enjoy him forever, but so much can get in the way of that. All our fears and failures, uh, our misguided desires, our pride and possessions, uh, the enemy of our souls and of God is still hard at work, uh, in turn deceiving us and then accusing us. Anything to drag us down and stop us worshipping God. But we can't and we won't let that stop us. As the second half of 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 says, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy all the works of the devil. Do you get that? Jesus came to remake us, 
uh, to restore us, to undo all the damage of sin and to turn us into a people who can worship God in spirit and in truth. He came to abolish the devil's ways. Things like death and destruction, selfishness and greed, pestilence and war. All will find their end in Jesus, who longs to give us an eternal future of life, contentment, health and peace. This is a theme we're going to be exploring some more in this time of worship today as we pray, sing, read and study the scriptures together now. May you be blessed today as we do that. Let's pray. Father God, this morning many people are at home feeling a whole range of emotions, from frustration through resignation to feelings of anger and deep grief. Help us this morning to come to you for your strength, your patience and your comfort to help us through this often lonely, difficult and scary time of being limited in who we can see and where we can go. We pray this morning that as people all over your world come to praise and worship you, that you will bless us as we acknowledge your presence, your power and your authority over all things. The one who is in us is far greater than the evil that is in this world. Amen.
greenhouse and I'm going to be talking this morning about being strong. I don't know how strong you are when you're tempted to do something wrong. I'm pretty weak when it comes to chocolate but on other things I'm maybe not just quite so bad but I'm not really talking about chocolate. What I'm talking about are those times when you're really tempted to do something which you often know is wrong. How do we find the strength to stand up to that. Well, here's a little thing that might help you to understand what I'm talking about. Here in the greenhouse, I've found some string. Just imagine for a moment that you're like a piece of string. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut two pieces, the same length. Here we are, there's one, and the other one. And what I'm going to do is to get you to imagine that you are like this piece of string. Do you think this piece of string is strong enough to stand up in a tub on its own? Well, no. And that's a bit like us, because on our own, we don't have the strength to stand up when things get tough and we're tempted to do wrong. So, how can we do something about that? Well. If we add a bit of glue, some of this, to the piece of string, like this, and like glue Peter, I've got one already prepared. If we add glue, then we will add strength to that bit of string. So now, when I try to put it into the tub, will it stand up? Yes, it does. It stands up because the glue has made it stronger. And that, you see, is like us. When we add God into our lives, like the glue to the string, it makes us stronger. And we're able to stand up when temptation comes our way to do something wrong. So I hope you'll remember the bits of string and adding God to our lives so that when the wrong things come along in our lives, we're able to stand firm and say no. And there's two songs that we used to sing that are quite helpful. One says, he that is in us is greater than he who is in the world. And the other one is, be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. you 
Our reading today is taken from Revelation chapter 12. A great and wondrous sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant, and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven. An enormous red dragon, with seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns on his heads. His tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. 
The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour her child the moment it was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the desert, to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the desert where she would be taken care of for a time, times and half a time out of the serpent's reach. Then from his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away with the torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring, those who obey God's commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus. Today we're heading back into the book of Revelation. If you've been part of the Bridge of Don Baptist Church family for a while, you'll know that we've been exploring this mysterious vision together since late last year. With video services now enabling many more folk to make it along to our services, I thought long and hard about whether it would still be really appropriate to continue in this series. But as I prayed that through, it seemed to me that we're living in a world that is getting closer and closer to the one that's portrayed in John's vision all the time. An unpredictable and often uncomfortable world where the things that are going on, wars, natural disasters, economic woes, political upheavals and pestilences, raise all sorts of questions for us. A world whose history, past, present and future is sketched out for us in John's incredible vision. So if you're struggling with questions about the world, about life and the future just now, the book of Revelation is actually a very good place to look for answers. But to do that, we need help both in understanding what it's saying to us and in applying the truths it offers to our lives in the here and now. The chapter we're looking at today is a very good example of this. A vulnerable woman at a time of crisis, a great dragon wreaking havoc, a cosmic battle, an angelic army and a special boy child. Just as it seems, they are completely finished. The child is taken to heaven and his mother escapes certain destruction with great eagle wings. 
it sounds like a pitch for a great fantasy movie. Some incredible combination of Lord of the Rings with Star Wars. To make sense of all this and find its application for our lives, we need to remember the keys for understanding John's vision that we have learned so far. One, John relates what he sees in the order in which he sees it, which is not necessarily the order in which it all happens. Two, what he sees is most often symbolic of something deeper. It's a visual representation of what it points to. Three, the key for understanding the symbols and all that they point to are the Old Testament scriptures. And fourthly, the vision is recorded to encourage and bless the people of God wherever they are, at whatever time in history they are living. So, holding firmly onto those keys, uh, let's take a deeper look at the incredible vision that unfolds in Revelation chapter 12. As we step into the vision, bear in mind what John has just seen. Seven letters to seven churches, seven seals broken and God's future for the world unfurled, seven trumpets sounding as great and insistent alarms of all that is unfolding. Wake up, wake up to all that's going on, take action, they say. And finally comes the great proclamation of Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever. The epic scene uh, of chapter 11 ends uh, with a vision of the temple of God being thrown wide open in the great temple of Jerusalem. The glory of God was in the Holy of Holies, behind wall after wall after wall. Uh, no one was allowed into that space except for the high priest. And even he was only allowed in once a year. But now the glory of God is free for all to see. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ in all his glory. But we're not quite there yet. Chapter 12 shows us where we are just now. John sees two signs. Signs, remember, always point to something. First, he sees literally a mega sign, a great sign. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet. Who is this woman? And what does this sign point to? Well, you need to remember Joseph him of uh, the Technicolor Dreamcoat fame. And remember his troublesome dream back in Genesis chapter 37, where he sees the sun, moon and stars all bowing down to him. Sun, moon and stars, the family of Joseph's dad, Jacob, the nation of Israel, the people of God. And so the woman points us to the people of God. But she also reminds us of Mary, the mother of Jesus. She's about to give birth to a special child, one who would rule the nations with a rod of iron. Verse 5. And that reference lands us right back into the second psalm, which directly speaks of the coming Messiah or the chosen one of God, the one who would set the world back to rights. Speaking of the one who is set to put down rebellion and restore God's creation, the psalm quotes God as saying, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. 
and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? And all this was written way back around 800 BC. God, says John, has been working out his plan in Jesus through all of history. And he continues to work that plan out, even today. Finally, the woman points us to the church, the new people of God, who is also referred to as the bride of Christ, kept safe in the face of grave dangers. Then John sees another sign, a great red dragon with seven heads, crowns and ten horns. Who is this dragon? And what does this sign point to? Fantastical creatures like Behemoth and Leviathan in the Old Testament point to challenges to God's rule and reign. And as verse 9 spells out, the dragon is that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan. He's a challenger who claims complete authority. And that's what all those heads and crowns and horns are all about. Uh, it's a claim that only by rights belongs to God. In a horrible and grotesque scene, uh, the dragon tries to gobble the special child as the child is being born. Uh, remember the Christmas story. Uh, remember King Herod's terrible response to it with his murder of the children of Bethlehem. Here's another view of what was really going on. Miraculously, that first Noel, Jesus was saved just in the nick of time. As the Apostle Paul put it in 1 Timothy in chapter 3 and verse 16, he was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world and taken up in glory. Or as John puts it here in verse 5, her child was caught up to God and to his throne. You see, the great cosmic war is decisively won in the birth of this child. As verse 12 proclaims, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. Now, six times in these verses of chapter 12, we're told that the great dragon has been thrown down, overthrown, as Jesus himself proclaimed in Luke chapter 4 and verse 21. Today, this has been fulfilled. Now. So here then is the thing. If this is the way it is, and it is, why is the world the way it is? John's vision explains why. See verse 12. Woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, and he knows his time is short. The dragon is enraged at his defeat. His time is fast running out. So in a Final act of vicious spite, verse 17 tells us, Then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and hold on to the testimony of Jesus. You see, he will do anything to stop this child becoming king. So he tries to deceive us, verse 9, fake news, lies, untruths, false perceptions, they all trace their roots back to him. And when that fails, he turns to accusations, as in verse 10. Don't let his accusations catch you out. Now, imagine if one of us somehow stumbled across a sure cure for coronavirus, but decided to keep that cure to ourselves. That would be wrong, wouldn't it? We wouldn't deserve its protection if we simply stood by and watched the suffering of others. But a disease worse than the coronavirus now isolates us from God. Everyone has got infected and sadly, the death rate is 
the blood of Jesus, the perfect Passover lamb, is its only remedy, its only cure. His blood speaks of death, for he let the virus of sin kill him in my place and yours. But his blood also speaks of life, for death couldn't hold him down. And with the infusion of his blood, we can all live his life forever. In Jesus, the terrible virus of sin and death is defeated. And that is not something that we can keep to ourselves. That's what the devil wants. As much death, destruction and ruin as possible. But like Jesus, we defeat his terrible plan by sharing the amazing cure with everyone we can. Verse 11 points us to these truths. They have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So folks, here is a vision of what has really been going on ever since the manger of Bethlehem became a cradle. As Daryl Johnson puts it, quoting Martin Luther's great hymn, And though the world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God has willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure. For lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fell him. That word is Jesus. Amen. May these words encourage your heart, strengthen your soul, and fill you with life and hope today. This is a 
We've come to the end of our morning service now. Thank you for joining us. And we are very aware of how lonely and how isolated some people can be during this particular pandemic. So if you are in a situation where we can help, either spiritually or physically, then please get in touch with us. You'll find contact details on our website, which is www bodbaptist.org.uk And before I close with a word of prayer, please remember that we do have a Zoom prayer meeting which will be happening on Wednesday the 6th of May at 7.30 in the evening. Please feel free to join us on that occasion. Let's close with prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son Jesus into the world. We bring our thanks and our praise that the evil one has been forever defeated and Jesus has been given all power and all authority here on earth as he has in heaven. We pray for all those who are struggling, whether with their health, their jobs or their finances. Heavenly Father, bless us all and protect us from the attacks of the evil one. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you.